Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. Sitting next to me today is the 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. Now 424 Chevy says that there's more power here and it's available lower in the rev range. And you know we gotta put that to the test. So we came out here today to camping in style and hooked up that 12,000 pound fifth wheel to find out how good this truck really is. Thank you to Camping in Style in Brooklyn, Ontario for the use of the fifth wheel that you see in this video. Let's start with the walk around. So powering our 2500 today is the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax V8 diesel. This thing now makes 470 horsepower and 975 pound feet of torque. And that is 25 horsepower more than it used to make and about 65 pound feet of torque more than it used to make. So there's more power in here. But again, Chevrolet also says that thanks to tuning to the transmission, the gear ratios and the engine Engine, there is more power available lower in the rev range now and that's something we're gonna to put to the test now the other thing of course I have to point out is just the styling for 2024 it has been tweaked it's got a bit of a different face on it they've added this nice Chevy logo up here on your air intake and that is a functional air intake folks it's actually doing something up there it's not just for looks so uh, of course this is subjective I think it's a pretty good looking truck, although I will admit it hasn't fully grown on me. To me, the design is a little bit busy, but that's just my opinion. I need to hear from you. What do you think about just the looks here on the 2024 Silverado HD? Go in the comments right now and let me know. So our truck today is a 2500 High Country, but it also has the Z71 off-road package. And that means we get this set of Goodyear Wrangler Trail Runners. This is not a really aggressive all-terrain tire, but it's definitely a step above a road-going tire. So if you do want to take on some rough roads, it's nice to get the package with those tires on there. Now, as we get back here to the door, to the A-pillar, B-pillar, sorry, uh, I'm going to check out my favorite sticker in the truck industry. It's right down here. It tells us the payload, the conventional total rating, the gooseneck tow rating, the fifth wheel tow rating. I love that General Motors puts this on their trucks and I think every other brand should follow suit. This is VIN specific, so it's only the numbers for this actual truck as it sits. It takes the guesswork out of it. You don't have to go online and read through the charts and hope you did it right. This sticker, like I said, should be industry standard and it's going to tell us that here in our truck we have 2,987 pounds of payload and 19,100 pounds of towing off that gooseneck ball back there. So, so those are some really nice numbers here for our 2500. Now the other thing that changed for 2024 is the bed here. Chevy basically took the bed from their half ton Silverado and they brought it up here to the HD. What does that mean? Well, it's a little bit wider now. So if you are hauling something that can take advantage of the space above the wheel wells, you can fit a little bit more of it. And then probably my favorite feature in the bed is something very simple. It's three fixed tie downs in each corner, an actual physical fixed tie down. And the fact that they have three of them stacked on top of each other, it gives you different height options. So if you're tying down different things, you have different choices. I think just that alone makes this one of the most functional beds out there. And I appreciate that they did it to the half tons and then brought it up to the HDs. Now, as we get along around to the very back, I got a duck under here and I will show you, we do have the multi-flex tailgate which is also uh, introduced on half ton, but it's now been brought up here for HDs. And actually, this is a funny usage case I never thought of. If you have your fifth wheel, you can drop this down to get in here to my light connection. Let's say I have something in the bed I wanna grab. So having this little drop down gate here allows me to access my bed without having to drop the entire gate and then I wouldn't have any space. So it's kind of neat actually with a fifth wheel. 
So now we're far enough back, let's talk about the trailer we have on today. This is a Keystone Cougar, and we'll just talk about the weight. So the unloaded vehicle weight here is 11,570 pounds. GVWR on the trailer, that's the max weight the trailer could weigh. So if it was fully loaded with water and payload, it can be up to 14,000 pounds. This is a, a really nice fifth wheel trailer paired to a 2500 series truck, at least we think so. And uh, why don't we hit the road now, go tow it, see how the Chevy handles. And now folks, here we are driving in the 2024 Chevy Silverado High Country HD 2500. Um, so we've got our fifth wheel behind us and we're out here pulling. And I think with this truck specifically, it was important to do this test because for 2024 GM did say it has more power. That's great. But they also said that there's more torque available lower in the rev range. And that's not something you can test by just hearing it or talking about it. You actually have to get out here and tow something heavy. So I think that's the first question to you, Dad, is, you know, the extra power is great, but just do you feel like in the low end, off the line, there's more torque or at least more than enough torque? No, oh, absolutely. And I mean, you know, we've got uh, 12,000 pounds worth of trailer on the back and on a hard packed dirt road, it's, uh, it's spinning its tires, not just in the first gear, but after the first gear shift. Mm -hmm. So in the first two gears, it's spinning. Um, yeah, and the shifts are closer together mm -hmm. than they used to be. They realign that. And a good thing, as long as I'm talking about it, is the transmission, which is uh, approved by Allison. Right, not built by Allison. Just but approved by Allison. Right. Uh, is available either with the diesel or the gas. Previously, the Allison didn't come with the gas, so that's a good thing. Right, 10 speed all the way across the lineup. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the added power, hard to complain about, but then there's a whole bunch of towing systems here that have also been added. Things like transparent trailer with a fifth wheel. We can show you a picture of that. We can't test it today because we don't have the camera actually set up on the back of the trailer. But here's one right here. When dad turns right, we get our right side or our passenger side camera that comes on and shows you all the way down the side of that trailer. And I think that's you know really smart dad. The more views you have when you're towing, the better. And heck, you even hooked up the fifth wheel using the Chimzo camera, right? Because you can look right into the back. Absolutely, and each camera view, whether you've got, whether you're looking at the, uh, the bumper hitch or you're looking at the fifth wheel hitch, you can zoom in on it when you're kind of like down to that last foot. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the resolution that these cameras is giving you on these screens it continues to improve. I mean, it's really good. So much so that Steve said you're half an inch off and I could move half an inch and actually judge that yeah. in the in the picture. Yeah. So yeah, more more cameras is also a good thing, and the Chevy has added that for 24. Um, how do you feel about your towing mirrors? They are powered going out, and they're quite big mirrors, aren't they? Yeah, they're big and square. I mean, they work. I wish they were. I, I guess I'm used to mine, which are taller on sure. the Ram. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, the the convex is massive. Yeah, it really. And is. and that's really the really the important one, because there's always a, a stinky little Toyota or a Mini hiding just <laughs> in your blind spot down by the down by the rear tire. So so that uh, that convex is great. Gotcha. So I'm actually going to do a test right now with the exhaust brake. This is something that we were talking about. So we're about to come down a hill here, and I want to try to feel it, Dad, when it actually comes on. Be my guess. So let's get kind of mid-hill. Exhaust brake is off. Okay, and now here comes exhaust brake now. Man, you hear it, but I didn't feel it at all. It's right now. It's starting to grind in. It's weak. It, it feels pretty weak. And again, this is probably mostly in comparison to your Ram 2500, because we've used that the most. And we know and that the Ram is definitely the most aggressive. Yeah. Even the, yeah, the Ford is not much different than what this is. So it's here, but I don't know why they don't step it up. It's yeah. just, uh, it's, it seems like such a no brainer. Yeah, to have more of that exhaust braking, uh, especially to go along with the, the added power, right? 
Well, in particular, I mean, I love the exhaust brake for the fact that on long downgrades, you just don't ever have to touch your brakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is good for control. It's also good for wear. Mm -hmm. Now, they did make a point, you might remember this morning, that because they've changed the, the gear shifting ear intervals, that also applies to the uh, the gearbox holding back as you're slowing down. Sure. In other words, you know, it's stepping down and holding harder than the previous edition, which I, I must admit, yeah, I've, I've noticed it. Sure. Um, is it radically different? No. No. But it uh, it is better. Sure. And then I guess the the kind of the natural question is, how are the brakes? Because you know, if you don't have the exhaust brake, you want to make sure you feel like your actual brakes here are good. So how do they feel with the trailer on the back? Yeah, absolutely fine. I mean, the the, the brakes are great. Um, you dial in the trailer brake controller. Of course, that's here as a factory option. Mm -hmm. And uh, between the brakes on the trailer and this, I mean, you can you can really get this thing stopped quickly. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the numbers on the truck and then how it's handling the weight. So payload on our truck right here is just a little over 2,900 pounds. And the tongue weight on that trailer back there is 2,200 pounds, leaving us with a generous 700 pounds in the middle. And once again, I hate to say this, but quite frankly, with the three of us up here in the cab and our little bit of camera gear, we're probably right at that payload number. Well, no. I've, I've cut back to light beer. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. And uh, I had a salad for lunch, so Good we're ball. okay. <laughs> but I, I think the point, once again, has to be stressed, Dad. We come back to this in every video, but we have to hit it again. Technically, yes, we are probably overloaded with this rig by just a little bit. However, I think you'd agree with me that this is a totally safe towing rig. This trailer is not overmatching the truck, despite the fact that you're going to be over your payload and over your GBWR by just a little bit yeah i would recommend this all day long and, and i should also point out that chevy has some of the most generous gvwrs again companies like ram they do not pump up their 2500 gvwr resulting in a worse payload but yeah i guess the point i'm again trying to make is that we are over by a couple pounds and we're not breaking the law and this is totally safe and that's the key thing and i think i'll stress that before we start getting the angry replies Payload is not a law. Correct. There is nothing out there that says you can't add some weight to that payload. The key is safe. Be safe. And you should be able to determine what's safe. Okay? Payload is a guideline. Correct. Unless you are commercial, then it's different. But we're not commercial. That's a whole nother ball of wax. Correct. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. However, 2,900 pounds feels like a generous amount of payload. Uh, 19,100 pound rating on our gooseneck ball. Those are great numbers for this truck, I feel like. And, you know, those are true numbers. If you went up to them, you'd probably still be okay. Sure, and you've got to consider what we're, what we're matching that to. This trailer is 12,000 pounds dry, 14,000 pounds wet. Right. Or, you know, GVWR. Exactly. Um, that is a real nice match for this truck. Yeah. And that's the way it feels. Power wise, braking wise. Um, one of the things I've been doing here, I'm just feeling the steering. I get to the crowd of the road, I let go of the wheel. It's it's not wagging the truck any shape, way, or form. Okay? It's very well controlled. And one of the things that I like about GM and their 2500 is they're still using leaf springs. And the leaf springs give you better side-to-side -side stability. They don't do the sort of excessive jounce, for instance, that I've been experiencing in my Ram that has coil springs in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely different. Just gives you that sort of stiffness, that, that solid feeling that you want, and that's, that's confidence, and confidence equals a less stressful drive, which, again, as you experience, and, and most people in the travel trailer industry know, you're usually going far, you know, you're usually going for a couple hours at least, if not a couple days. So you do not want to have a stressful white knuckle drive and, well, what we're feeling right now in this truck is that you wouldn't. Yeah, with this particular trailer, that's exactly what I'm feeling and so like I said, it's, it's a real nice match and uh, so far so good. Now mind you, this is only our first kick at the can and we've got this truck for a little while and I do plan on towing my own 35 foot grand design with this truck shortly so being how familiar i am with that and with my 
previous or my current truck with my Ram, I think I'll be able to give you some real insight when I get doing it with this truck. Yeah, that'll be interesting. So GM actually gives us pretty good access to our cameras while moving as well. So you can see there's our nose camera right there. Let's see what else. Oh, there's your rear camera. Look back at your trailer. Wow, that's a cool view. Look at that view, Dad. Looking straight down at the back of your truck, although it's kind of confused as to where the fifth wheel is and isn't, but that's pretty neat. There's looking down at the front of your truck looking down the sides of your truck forwards and then the sides of your, this is an awesome view, backing in somewhere, pulling into a campsite, having that range of view down both sides is very cool. There's your hitch view, which we do not need right now. And that's it. And now I will say this is actually a change because you may remember not that long ago when you brought up a camera in a GM, it had an eight second timeout. Oh, there's your Chimsel camera. That's good if you wanna check your connection. And that's the same one. But yeah, this is this is a departure. GM used to have an eight second timeout on their cameras, and now look, it just stays on indefinitely. And other brands used to do this, so I wonder if GM didn't say, you know what, if the other brands are doing it, we're doing it too, because there are no regulations as to how long this picture can stay on the screen for. Frankly, I think there should be, but that's besides the point. GM is now letting you watch it indefinitely, so as you're cruising down the road, you can look all around your truck, check all your connections, make sure you're good to go. Yeah. Without a doubt, and like I said, look at the quality of that picture. Yeah, it really is, uh, it's nice. We have to talk about the interior here now because it is totally redone. And essentially what they did is they redesigned the half-ton interiors, which frankly desperately needed it. Uh, and then they brought that interior up here to the heavy duty. So if you've been in a modern day Silverado or Sierra, this is gonna feel familiar to you. Um, but that's you know not a bad thing. This is a beautiful interior, 13.4 inch touchscreen, 12 inch digital display up there in front of the driver. Uh, finally, actual real wood accents. We definitely complained about High Country quite a bit in the past that it was basically brown leather and a bit of fake wood. Well, now they've added real stitching everywhere, beautiful badges, and some real wood accents. Yeah, because and I think a, they got tired of the, all two, the complaining. And a two tone color scheme. Yeah. Even, and it doesn't scream at at you um, it's kind of a blue black yeah you'll notice particularly on the doors yep and uh, yeah you know what it's subtle and it's it's uh, it's refined that's fair and I think you know what you made a point which I'll just bring up driving out today to go do our Oshawa plant tour without a trailer on the back how just quiet and comfortable and luxurious this truck is cruising empty and it's just something that I, I think we always have to come back to because this is such a departure from where trucks were 10 especially 20 years ago HDs you barely suffer when you buy an HD these days in terms of ride quality noise any of that stuff it's it's just unbelievable how buttoned down and dialed in these trucks are with no weight on them Right. Yeah, the sound deadening is amazing, and as I was saying to you earlier, I really notice it because I find myself speeding all the time. Yeah, because it's so quiet, so I don't I don't have that association between speed and road noise. Yeah, um, but you know they've they've done a they've done a really nice job. Yeah, they, they took all the. The, the crap that we've been giving them for yeah. a couple of years and they paid attention totally and I, I just love the fact that yeah these days you're getting this luxury truck interior and the drive of the truck can actually match just how nice and luxurious the interior is with a nice luxurious quiet drive now we also have to mention that at you know a hundred thousand dollars it better be fair point so but you know you are getting something for your money and particularly with high country the um, point they made this morning was that year to date, 35% of sales in the HDs is high country. Yeah, it's the most popular trim in the HD segment 2500 Chevrolet right now. So you know what? People are ticking that give me everything box. Yep. And and $100,000 doesn't seem to be bothering them. So obviously they feel they're getting their money's worth. Yep. Well folks, we have arrived at the end of this video. Now, Dad, I think it's worth mentioning that for 2024, Chevy is not playing in the torque wars. Ram and Ford, they went over a thousand pound feet a while ago and they're chasing each other now. Chevy yeah. is refusing to play. And frankly, I mean, come on, 975 pound feet is enough. But the truth is that what they did here, it's not that big headline grabbing number. It's providing power where you actually need it. And I think, you know, after towing the trailer today, they did a good job. And frankly, I mean, that's what you buy a heavy duty truck for. You know, majority of guys who buy these, they tow. And 
For those guys, you'll understand what Chevy has done here is made a dozen smaller changes, but in critical areas. And overall, this 24 is a better tow vehicle. Absolutely. So yeah, that's it for this one. We do have this truck a little while longer, so stay tuned for the channel. We're going to put some more videos out on it. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. So go below. Let us know what you think of this 24 Silverado. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya. Bye now.